City Police try to keep a tight lid on gambling, but it's tough for them to shut down games that change the location frequently. In this kind of an operation, the wheels are rigged, the dice shaved to favor the house. But the marks don't notice them. They're too busy looking into the pretty eyes of the steerers who bring them there. Dances hard. Give me another 50 inch ship, Slade. How are you tonight, Mr. Redmond? Uh, about as good as my luck, and that's pretty sour. Let me have another 50, Doris. It could change my luck. It's all right, Slade. Uh, but, Mr. Redmond, would you stop in the office when you're through? Sure. Keep your filthy hands off me! <laughs> Get your hands off her. Well, well. Mama Bear to the rescue, huh? Go tell Bruce to come in here. Just who do you think you are? Real cute kid you got there. You leave her alone, Murph. Oh, come off it, Doris. I was just trying to have a little fun. I don't like your kind of humor. Well, you can't please everybody. Well, what did you want, Doris? I want you to tell Murph to get out of here and stay out. Well, go ahead, Bruce. Tell me. Now, wait a minute, Murph. I, I don't want any trouble with you. But you do, huh? I just want you to keep your hands off Gloria. And suppose I don't. Oh, now, look, Murph. Look, Doris, Murph didn't mean any harm. He just... You make me sick. That'd be Paul Redmond. How much did he go for tonight? Started with 50, then he took another 50. Mm hmm Another customer for me, huh? I'll wait in here. That is, if you will. Excuse me. Let him in, will you, Doris? Come in, Mr. Redmond. Your luck improve? Ah, this is not my night, I guess. You haven't had a night for a long time. So I owe you a little money. It's a thousand dollars now, Mr. Redmond. What are you gonna do, sue me? We're going to discount your notes to a collection agency. You can pay them off. Wait a minute, Bruce. Maybe that won't be necessary. We'll settle for $500, Mr. Redmond. Now, wait a minute, Doris. We can't settle for anything. Let me handle this, Bruce. There's nothing to handle. I'm broke, flat. You know the old saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip. What makes you think you're a turnip? Who's he? I'm the guy that's going to collect that thousand bucks you was, plus a little interest. Murph, take it easy, will you? Shut up. I'll drop around tomorrow morning, Mr. Redmond. You better have a hundred dollars on account. Another hundred every week until we're square. You think you're scaring me? Oh, I know I am. Sometimes I even scare myself. See you, Miss Redmond. Right. I didn't like that, honey. Trying to cut me out by letting that sucker off the hook for $500. Now, it's time we got something straight. Wait a minute, Doris. Let go of her, will you? <laughs> you know, you two should stop acting like this as a bingo concession at a church bazaar. You two are making some important money. So? So the more you make, the more you can lose. You think that over before you get any more cute ideas. If I put the freeze on me, you'll both wind up in cold storage. Be seeing you. Now we'll make it there. Doris, are you all right? Don't touch me. I knew this would happen. I knew it the minute you brought that man in here. Just to collect a few bad debts, you said. Well, you can see what happened, can't you? Or are you too blind and too scared? Doris, please, knock it off, will you? It'll all work out It's somehow. already worked out. And just the way Murph planned it. He's moving in. He's taking over. Now, it's not just the business anymore. It's Gloria. Well, maybe you don't care about her. She's not your daughter. All right! Oh. All right, Doris. What do you want me to do? Look, he's got us hooked, and he knows it. Now, we move this operation anywhere else, and Murph and his muscle are going to be right there. It'll be just the same as it is now, only worse. So what's the answer? There isn't any answer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
Now, you're just gonna have to learn to live with him, that's all. Well, maybe you are, but I'm not. Wait a minute. So what do you mean by that? I mean, either Murph goes, or I do. Are you serious? As a case of double pneumonia, Bruce. Number six. This is a private office. Yeah. I bet that makes it real convenient sometimes, huh? Honey, why don't you go out and powder your nose or something? Hmm? Nice. Miss Redmond, you got some money for me? No, and what's more, you're not gonna get any. Now, you get out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Redmond, real sorry. For you. <laughs> 21 lousy bucks. Here, take that pretty secretary out to lunch on me, the buck. Real nice doing business with you, Miss Redmond. See you tomorrow. Look, Redmond, I'm sorry, I didn't... I'm not calling you for sympathy, Green. I'm just telling you if that goon of yours ever comes within 10 miles of me again, I'll get the police on you and your gambling layout and your strong-arm boy. Redmond, will you listen to me? I mean it, Green, every word of it. I got into it when Helen Redmond came to my office to hire me to find her husband, Paul. He just walked out of his office in the Mott Haven freight yards four nights before, and nobody had seen him since. The Missing Persons Bureau had drawn a blank. Mrs. Redmond wanted somebody who could devote their entire time to finding her husband. It didn't sound very exciting, but it's the kind of a job that pays the rent. I asked all the questions I usually ask in a missing persons case, but there was only one thing I could get a toehold on. No, Paul didn't seem worried about anything. Except... Except what, Mrs. Redmond? The night before he disappeared, he... He did say that if a man calling himself a bill collector came around to the house, uh, not to pay any attention to him. A bill collector? Is that all? I, I know this must sound very strange to you, Mr. Hammer, but Paul was like that. He, he never confided in me. Will you help me, Mr. Hammer? Of course, I'll, I'll try, Mrs. Redmond. Now, you go on home and get some rest, huh? I'll let you know just as soon as anything happens, all right? Thank you. You'll hear from me. To take a job like this, the least you can do for the client is to go through the motions. My first stop was the place where Paul Redman had been seen last, the Mott Haven Railroad Yards. Redman's secretary didn't think she could be of any more help to me than she'd been to the detectives from the Missing Persons Bureau. And she wouldn't have been, except that her description of the man who'd barged into the office unannounced fitted something Mrs. Redman had told me, the business about the bill collector. the description of Redmond's visitor could fit a lot of guys. It also matched that of a character named Murphy, a renegade private detective who had his license lifted for unethical practice. I'd recently heard he was operating a one-man collection agency. It was worth a little time to check on it. I dropped the car at the office, checked some sources to locate Murphy. I learned he had a combination office and living quarters in a hole in the wall on 42nd Street. You came here, nobody sent for you. Oh, some breakfast? No, thanks, no, no. <laughs> All I want out of you is some information, Murph. Like what? Yeah, you were up at the Mott Haven Railroad Yards last week. You saw a guy named Redmond. I did? Yeah, so what about it? 
Why don't you get out of here? Oh, now, Murphy, that doesn't answer my question. It's the only answer you're getting. You want to bet? <laughs> Keep right in there. Murphy, why don't you do yourself a favor, huh? And open these files. You come here looking for trouble, I'll be more than glad to accommodate you. All right. Why don't you do me a favor and try, huh? Touche! And guard. Very good. Glad you liked it. Now, do I get the keys of those filing cabinets or do I amputate? The keys. The key. are going to hear about this. <laughs> yeah, when they do, they'll die laughing. Okay, our, our, our Redmond, here we go. Well, that's very interesting. Yes, sir. He owed a thousand dollars and you were going to collect two. Well, that's quite a markup, Merv. Now, incidentally, who are Bruce and Doris Green? Never heard of them. Never heard of them, huh? <laughs> Bruce and Doris Green? Bruce and Doris Green. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't care for them. They run a floating crab game. Where? Seminole Hotel. Seminole Hotel. Thanks loads. Oh, uh, incidentally, Murph, you better take care of that hand. It's gonna swell up on you. After my chat with Murph, I went straight to the Hotel Seminole to see Bruce and Doris Green. The desk clerk said the Greens had checked out, but I wanted proof. I got it. The suite was unoccupied now. Bruce and Doris Green had apparently pulled anchor and steered their floating crap game to some other snug harbor. Time hammer. Where are they? Oh. Bruce and Doris Green. I told you yeah, I'm Seminole, Seminole Hotel. The Seminole Hotel, only they're not there. They cashed in and checked out. I didn't know that. Yeah, you didn't know that. I tell you, I didn't know that. I give you my word as a gentleman and as a fellow detective, I didn't know it. It made sense. Whatever else he was, Murph wasn't stupid. I knew I'd got all I was going to get out of him temporarily. For the next two days, calling on every stool pigeon I knew, dropping the word that I was in the market for information on a floating crap game run by Bruce and Doris Green. I knew I would turn up a lead sooner or later. It came sooner. That afternoon, a crew at the Mott Haven Railroad Yard started unloading boxcars that had been standing on a site. And at 2.45, the mystery of where Paul Redmond went when he walked out of his office that night was solved. <laughs> The man who found the body thought it was just some bindle stiff and called for the brakeman. The brakeman knew better. He recognized Paul Redman. The front office man verified the identification, called the police, and then called me. had finished and were gone. They were just removing the body. Pending an autopsy, best guess was that Redmond had been killed with a blunt instrument and his body stuffed between the cases. Because of lack of warehouse space, unloading had been delayed almost a week. I asked the front office man if I could take a look at the spot where the body was found.
technical men from Homicide had undoubtedly found everything that was to be found. I merely wanted to study the possibility that Redmond might have been killed elsewhere and his body dragged here. It was a good possibility. When I left the yards, I drove down to headquarters to brighten the day for Pat Chambers. of Paul Redmond's body, my job was over. Pat's was just beginning. But with the information I could give him, his job didn't figure to be too tough. Now, let me get this straight. Bill Murphy was trying to collect a gambling debt Paul Redmond owed a couple of people named Bruce and Dara Screen. Check. And you think that Redmond couldn't or wouldn't pay off and Murphy roughed him up? Yeah, only went too far. And killed him. Yeah, that's right. That makes it make sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So now all you have to do is uh, go out, find Murphy, Arrest him, and you can go home and watch TV. You got any idea where we can find this Bruce and Dara screen? Come on now, Pat. I hand you a killer in our package. The least you can do is type of loose ends, huh? Mike, I don't know what this department would do without you. <laughs> now, you be careful where you ask that question, Pat, because somebody may give you the right answer. <laughs> Crime detective. Oh, Patrick. It was 8 o'clock when I got back to the office to check the afternoon mail and call Pat to see how he'd made out with Bill Murphy. Shut the door. Murph! Shut the door. Kind of surprised to see me, ain't you? Thought maybe the cops would have me downtown, give me a sweatin'. Oh, yeah. As soon as I heard that uh, Redmond's body was found, I cleared out of my place before the roof fell in. So why'd you come here? In the first place, I ought to kill you for that slapping around you gave me the other day, but I got bigger fish to fry. Like who? Like Bruce Green. Why Bruce Green? Because I want to find him and beat the truth out of him about the Redmond killing. And just what is the truth about the Redmond kill? Green killed Redmond. Why? To frame me. Oh, come on. He knew that if Redmond was found dead, I'd be elected Queen of the May because of that office call I made on Redmond. Why would Green want to frame you? Well, we had a deal that his wife wanted out. And Green didn't have nerve enough to give me the boot. I'm leveling with you, Hammer. You're wasting your time trying to convince me. Hey, call the police. Hey, talk to them. Sure, sure. I'd still be talking when they pulled the switch. I still don't understand what you're doing here. Where's Green? Well, he's your buddy. He's your playmate. How should I know? I thought maybe you found him. No. You better be leveling with me, Hammer. Well, as just so happens that I am, Murph. But even if I didn't know where Green was, I wouldn't tell you. You'd like to see me burn, wouldn't you? No, of course not. Not if you didn't kill Redmond, no. Well, I didn't kill him. Look, don't tell me. Call the cops. Well, give yourself up and I'll... Will you stop trying to con me with that if you're innocent, you got nothing to be afraid of routine? I'll find Green, and when I do, I'll get the truth out of him about the Redmond killing. Wait a minute, Murph. Wait just one minute. I'll make a deal with you. I got a few lines out on Green myself. Now, if, uh, if I find out anything, I'll let you know. That's half a deal. What's the rest of it? That you let me know anything that you find. Why should I? Beating up on Green isn't going to get you anywhere unless you got a witness when he squeals. You turn him over to the police, you'll deny everything. Huh? Okay, okay, Hammer, I'll buy it. But if you're cooking up any of those cute little tricks... No tricks, Murph. <laughs> no tricks. Keep in touch. If I'm not in, leave a message with the service. You don't really expect me to believe that story. Why would he be running around looking for Bruce Green if he weren't telling the truth? I'll ask him what I grab. What are you going to ask Bruce Green when you grab him? You already have. You already have? Staying at the Parkview apartment, 69 Central Park West. I talked to him late this afternoon. Is that all you did, just talk to him? Well, what more could I do? Well, you could have brought him in, you schlock. On what charge? We can't even hang a gambling rap on him. And don't tell me Murphy's story changes anything because it doesn't. It's just a wild, unsubstantiated accusation. What do you want, Pat? We want Redmond's killer. Whether it's Murphy or Green or somebody else. But we can't make a move against Green until we can make it stick. Okay, you want a killer, huh? 
Okay, I'll deliver you one killer, just the way you want him. All tied up with ribbons with a confession nailed to his back. Mike. You know, you got it easy. Yeah? Why? You get a burn, you just let it out. Someone gets in your way, you clobber them to the ground. So somebody's head gets broken. So there's a mistake made, maybe. Oh, well, we react differently, uh, Patrick. You don't burn. Don't I? Let me tell you something, mister. This is a real sweat box. How many kids do you think I get in here? How many punks and killers with that grin on their face saying, you can't touch me? And I want to touch them. Hard. Your way. Oh, buddy boy, you're alive after all. You're really alive. Yeah. And don't you forget it. Because I've got muscles, too, so don't bunch yours up. But I've also got a job to do, and that job has got to be done a certain way. And that's the way it's going to be done. And, buddy boy, that goes for you, too. <laughs> spent the next couple of hours trying to contact Murphy to let him know where he could find Bruce Green. I wanted to keep my word, not because of any moral obligation to Murphy, but because I wanted a killer. When Murphy finally called and I told him he was raring to go, that let me two of us. Central Park West and 69th in 10 minutes. Murphy was waiting for me in the lobby. I'll get it, Josh. Yes, Mr. Green? That's right. Fine. Wait a minute, what do you want? Yeah. Who is it, Bruce? This man's a private detective. So what do you want? I want to do your husband a favor, Mr. Green. A favor? How? We're giving you a chance to sign this, peacefully and quietly. What is it? It's a confession that he killed Paul Redmond, and why. This is some kind of a joke I'm not buying. You open that door, you're going to think the Empire State Building fell on you. Doris, call the police. Well, it'll be all over before they get here, Mrs. Green. Mr. Green, if I were you, I'd sign that. Because if you don't, I'm going to have to have Murphy convince you. Murph? Yeah, he's waiting right outside. Bruce, what is this? I don't know what he's talking about. Mr. Green, sign uh, look, you it. take this and make it much more simple. Sign it. Sign it. I've already talked to the police. Okay. Now I'll have to talk to Murph. Now wait a minute. Good morning. I hope I'm not intruding. Uh, now, Murph, you stay away from me, yeah? Well, it's out of my hands now, honey. Oh, he'll kill him. Yeah, that's quite possible. Oh. Now, honey, I'd stay out of this fire with you unless you had something to do with that Redmond murder. All right. All right. Talk. Talk. Uh, that's enough. I killed him. I killed Redmond. No! That's enough. No, no, I want my dough. Dough? What dough? The commissions they owe me. Just a minute, Murph. You lay one hand on Mrs. Green now or ever, and I'll skin you like a sausage. Now, wait a minute. I thought we were partners. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The partnership has been dissolved as of now. to 10 in the morning, but it felt like midnight the day after tomorrow. I called Pat to tell him I had a killer to deliver, all nice and neat, just the way I'd promised. There was only one thing missing, the ribbons. 